I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share the computer sound and optimize it, which I didn't do earlier, but now that it's on, it should work. I just shared my whiteboard. Stop share. So folks, that was the whiteboard, share, there we go. All right, so let me go back here. We're on our last day of professional development. I am at the high school today, hiding in my office. And we are here to talk about Newzella. We pay a lot of money for Newzella. Um, it is a program that is hugely helpful. We use it in grades three to 12. Um, it because that's what it's designed for. So we pay for it at both schools and I would love to see more use of it. So that's why I'm hoping that people will kind of watch this video and see the benefits of it. Um, it's great for individualizing instruction. The video that I'm going to share talks about using Newzella for remote instruction. If I remember correctly, he talks about the free version, which we don't have. And Newzella just recently changed their payment structure or their, their structure of what's included of what you pay for. So it's not called New, Newzella Pro anymore. It's called Newzella Essentials. It's on your end, it's going to look the same. It's just named differently. But what they've started to do is take, because they're always developing new things, they're starting to take their more specialized programming and package them into other add-ons that you can pay even more for. So we have what was once Newzella Pro, it's Newzella Essentials. It's the basics of what you need to be able to provide reading material to students at their reading level that is engaging, timely, interesting. They pull content from many different sources on a daily basis. They are adding new content all the time, definitely current content. So if you cover current events in any way whatsoever, you will be able to find those things in Newzella. And then you'll be able to put it at the student's level and you'll be able to keep track of all of it through your teacher dashboard, which integrates beautifully with Google Classroom. So let me first do the video for you and I will try and get it full screen. Yesterday I had a suggestion for that and where this is a little bit longer of a video that would probably be useful to you. Let's see if I can do this without. Medical. In this video series about how to teach remotely, I'm going to be sharing different ideas and strategies for how to use free education technology programs to teach your students online. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about how to use one of my favorite programs, Newzella. Newzella normally costs money, but because of the current situation with school closures, they've made their product free for educators until the end of the school year. Newzella is probably the best resource for pulling together highly engaging articles about just about any topic you can imagine. Newzella updates their website on a daily basis so students can access articles about relevant current events alongside articles about different academic topics. But what makes Newzella really stand out is the fact that each article is available at multiple Lexile levels. Having access to the same article at different Lexile levels will allow you to give students articles at their just right reading level. In this video, I'm going to show you several different strategies for how you can use this amazing resource for remote teaching. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. If you find the tips that I share in this video helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly video updates. I've been using Newzella in my own class for years. The fact that it is now free for all educators to use until the end of this school year is definitely an opportunity that you shouldn't pass up. So let's jump in and see what Newzella is all about. In order to access your free account, click Get Free Access. Click on the Get Instant Access button, log in with an email. It's going to ask you whether or not you have a previous Newzella account. If you don't, click No and then Get Started. Choose I'm an educator. Select yes for being a faculty member of a K-12 school and then choose your role. Enter the name of your school and the city where it's located. And then you should be logged into your account. If you you don't have to worry about any of that. You all have accounts. Um, if you need an invitation, I can send it. But generally, if you just go to Newzella and you sign in using your Google account, it'll be like, oh, you're from Mashpee. Just come on in. 
So don't worry about all that. And we pay for it, so it did not end at the end of the school year. You have a Google Classroom, mm -hmm. by far the best way to create. Do you have a question? Go ahead, Dave. Uh, because we pay for it, are we getting extra benefits or more, you know, uh, advanced uh, things from it than? What, um, what he's way? right. What he's going to show you is basically what we have, what we pay for anyway. So when it went away for free for teachers, you've had it all along. Okay. All right. This is, I think, our. We're starting our sixth year with Newzella. We've had it since I've started working here. All right, here we go. A Newzella account for them is to go up to the classes tab and then click sync with Google. There you'll see a menu with your different Google classrooms. Select the classroom that you want to bring in, choose the grade and subject, and then click sync selected classes. Once your class is synced, you'll see it show up below. And when you click on students, you'll see the students that are registered for your Google classroom show up in your Newzella account. Now all students will need to do is log in with their email and they'll be able to access their personalized Newzella account. If you don't have a Google Classroom, you can also add students by going up to create a class, give the class a name, a subject, and a grade level, click create class, and in order to add students, go to more and then select add students. Here you'll be provided a link you can give to your students in order to get them into Newzella, or you could share with them the class code. So let's take a look at the different content that Newzella offers. You'll see at the top there are different tabs for different subjects, as well as a search tab where you could just search for any topic that you are interested in finding an article about. Once you've entered your search term, you'll see that a bunch of articles show up about that topic. In addition to individual articles, you'll see that there are also text sets. A text set contains multiple articles about that particular topic. And one of the great things about Newzella is that many text sets have already been pre-created and some have already even been put together as an assignment by other teachers. So let's say that I want to check out this article about elephants. I can click on it and you'll see at the top that there's an option to change the Lexile level of this particular article. So notice how if I have it at an 810 Lexile level, the grade level equivalency for this article is approximately grade five. Whereas if I drop the Lexile level down to a 400, the article is going to be more appropriate for a second grade reading level. The content of the articles is mostly the same. It's just that the complexity of the language has been changed to make it more readable for different levels of readers. Now, once you've actually set up Newzella with your students, it's going to actually learn their individual reading levels, and you're really not going to have to bother yourself with changing the Lexile level of the different articles. We'll take a look at how that works later. So let's say that I want to take this article and create an assignment for my students. I'll select Create Assignment, and there you'll see that I'm given a drop-down menu where I can choose the particular class that I want to assign this article to. You'll notice on text level, it says adjust level. Again, the article is actually going to auto adjust based on my student's reading level after the program learns what that is. And I'm also able to write specific instructions that I want to give to my students. Usually in these instructions, I'm telling my students to highlight the text and annotate it in a particular way in order to build a skill. So I might tell them to highlight words they don't know in red and then highlight any parts of the text that they have a connection about in yellow. Once I'm ready to create an assignment, I'll click assign and there you'll see I have a created article and I'm also able to view exactly who has read this article as well as whether they did the different activities that are associated with the article. So let's go ahead and look at what this would look like on the student end. Once a student logs in, they're going to see the article that has been assigned to them at the top of their page. When they select it, the article will be pushed out to them at their just right reading level. And then they can go ahead and read that article and do the activity that's been assigned to them. In order to highlight, the student just needs to drag over the word that they want to highlight. If they were assigned to do an annotation, they could also write a note underneath what they've highlighted. At the end of the article, you'll see that there's a quiz that's available for students. You'll see there's also an option to practice power words. Power words are available for some articles, but not all. A student can see their progress on all the articles that have been assigned to them by clicking on their binder. There, they're able to see the average Lexile level of the articles they've been reading, as well as their quiz average and their performance on all the individual articles that have been assigned to them. 
I use this binder to motivate my students to do well on the quizzes by giving them different goals that they need to meet for their personal Lexile level, as well as the number of articles that they read and their average quiz scores. When students log into their accounts for the first time, you're going to want to direct them to the reading skills check. The reading skills check is essentially a diagnostic that's going to help Newzella determine what level to be pushing the articles out to students. You'll see that these reading skills checks have eight questions rather than the four that most of the articles have. And that's because it's determining how students perform with different reading skills that are applied to the articles in the reading skills check. A clear way to use Newzella for remote teaching is simply as a resource where students can be learning about the different topics that you would be studying in class. I teach ancient civilizations. So let's say, for example, that I want to find a text set about ancient China. Here I can click on the text sets tab and see what text sets have already been created. From there, I can share that entire text set to my Google Classroom. And I might not require students to read every single article in the text set, but I'm going to have them select articles that are interesting to them. One of the ways I've been using Newzella in my class for a long time is by having students apply different reading skills to a Newzella article and creating a nonfiction report. I've created the template for this report in Google Docs. You'll see that this document shows students the different reading skills that they would be practicing in their report. So let's take a look at a couple of different nonfiction reports that my students have created. Students are going to apply different reading skills to an article, such as identifying the main idea, stating their opinion, identifying vocabulary words that they don't know, asking questions about the text, and so on. Because this report is already a digital assignment, it's perfect for remote learning. Another idea is that you could include a link to a Newzella article in a Flipgrid assignment that you've created. That link could be the centerpiece of a Flipgrid assignment. Students could all read about a particular topic and then create short video responses in a virtual classroom in order to discuss that article. Newzella would be a perfect choice for this because every student in your class could be learning about the same content yet reading the article at their just right Lexile level. I hope you've learned what an amazing resource Newzella can be for remote teaching. It's going to allow you to provide students with engaging, relevant content at their just right reading level, and you can embed Newzella articles into a variety of virtual learning assignments. If you have any questions about how I've used Newzella with my class or how I plan to use it with remote teaching, please ask in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching my video to the end. If you found it helpful, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, share it with other teachers, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. Thanks so much and have a great week. In this video series about how to teach- I've gotten really bad at how to now go back to a smaller video. <laughs> Actually, let me go this way. Series about how to teach remotely. And I'm going to subscribe to him because I don't think I have. I like the way he explains things. You can tell that he's a teacher first and then a tech person second. Um, it's not about the technology in this the case of this video because it's, it's really about the needs of your student. And Newzella articles, they are so engaging and the topics are so varied. So even using it as a research tool, you probably can't use it for academic research, like when you're teaching real research and you want them to use, you know, certain types of um, resources, but to build background knowledge or to activate prior learning on a certain topic before they do the real research, it's a great way to be able to do that. Um, he gave the suggestion of using it with um, Flipgrid, you can use these articles as a launching off point for all kinds of activities. It doesn't have to be necessarily a Flipgrid, but I think that, that his suggestions are pretty awesome. Um, let me go back to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Okay. What are your, some of your thoughts about what you just saw? Well, you know what? Um, I, I've used it before, and I used it in a skills class. So um, uh, I, I like it because it, it, it does um, improve the kids or help to improve the kids' comprehension. And it also gives you a comprehension score that I think is more accurate than some of the 
the STAR testing that, that we, we give out. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is because it comes out daily, it comes out on, on current events and things. Sometimes I'm interested in it. I knew the students won't be, but I'll, I'll click it on it. It's just like a brief reading and uh, it's great that way. So I just I, looked at one this morning. So just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When the daily email comes in, I'm like, oh, I could read that because I don't yeah, watch the news. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. I get a report of the usage in the district and um, you're our number one teacher of New Zella. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. I might change this year for my new position, but I, I just, I did. I, I used it a couple times a week, you know, because I thought one, it gave the students a break from me, which mm -hmm. you know, they, they needed. And, and two, it was, I thought it was beneficial. So That's awesome. Dave. I, I'm glad, hey, I didn't know I was number one, okay? <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be hitting you up to do some PD. <laughs> like, I like that you can change their reading level too. Like I was thinking for all my students, so I have a caseload of 40 plus or whatever in grades three through 12. So like when they're home for the remote week, I was like, you know what? I could do this and have them work on lots of different language skills for speech and language. Um, and then they could come back with that information and we could jump off of that for, um, cause even social skills, like my social skills kids, the kids on the autism spectrum need to be connected on what to be able to talk to other kids about. So like yeah. it's as simple as even just being able to know what's in the article. So it's nice that I was trying to do my schedule as I'm doing this. I'm like, oh, that's something I could assign for the home week that wouldn't be too heavy. And they could exactly. come with some information. You yep. know, uh, an, another, what I do quite a, uh, just about every time I use it, I put it on the board. We read it together as a group. So, you know, then you can go round robin and, uh, and then you can, uh, then, you, you know, you tell them to reread it on their own course. I don't know if they do or not, but at least they, um, you're, you're, you're able to get that information across to them uh, in a way that they can understand. And I always put it at their level when we're reading it too, or a level maybe just a little bit above them so that they can uh, struggle and I can help, I'm there to help them, you know, to, do you like use the classroom, Dave? I didn't realize there was a classroom yeah. option because I don't have a Google Classroom, so that was nice to see on there that I could still create a classroom. So. Yeah, it's, it, it, it really works out well in, in regards to uh, checking to see if they've done what you've asked them right. to do. You know? Can't lie. The computer doesn't lie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're number one. It's not lying. The data tells all. Um, let me share my screen again. Um, share screen, go here, share. And then I open a new one. Zella.com. So like I said, all of us already have accounts. And if you haven't signed up for it yet, you basically just go in to sign into New Zella and you'd click with Google and it will bring you right in. And like I said, it will recognize you as being a member of the Mashpee group and it will it just add you to it. And then you're able to come in here and whether it's just to go right in and search for articles, you can go in and start to create your assignments. The educator center is something I also wanna highlight. Um, there's, a, there's, there's so much in here. I actually shared it um, in my newsletter last fall or last winter but I'll just open it now. So under professional learning, there we go. Because again, I can't do it justice in a 50 minute slot, but you'll find out in here, basically there's a certification, Dave, that you can go in and become a certified educator for Newzella. It's great for those teachers that are using it on a regular basis. It fills in the gaps that maybe you didn't even know. Because once you start to use a yeah. tool, you tend to use it very predictably and you don't realize that maybe there's a few other things floating around that it has that you haven't discovered. So I always suggest um, my regular users of any program to see if it has a certification program because it's gonna be able to explore, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, not explore you, it expose you, sorry, stroke, um, expose you to what you might not already know. So that's one part of it. There's also live webinars that they offer that you can go into and you can watch. They're always listed in here. Anything from beginners to those who are doing more with the program. Um, some of this is new to me. It's looking a little bit different. They might have updated it. 
distance learning, that's a new tab. So being able to go in here and see what they have on distance learning using their program is probably very helpful. And then their getting started section helps you with the logistics, like how to set up your classes and implement the product, um, being able to assign um, articles and assignments to your students and just the basics of how it works. So this whole professional learning section in Newzella is very powerful. And then there's also the Newzella community, which is basically everybody who is a Newzella teacher. You can join it just like you would a community for like when you had smart boards, maybe you join the smart network, but it's a way to be able to share ideas, learn new ones, um, collaborate on projects. You can look to find content or groups or teachers who teach the same thing as you, or there's so many ways to connect with Newzella content and users and to be able to improve your skills when it comes to the program to better provide for your students. So that's something worth checking out as well. They're giving me my little tour, making sure that you're allowing everything because otherwise you might not get all of the benefits of it. So anyways, it's just having me set up my profile because I don't have one. I don't even know if I can get out of it right now. Susie, oh, do, like, do you know how um, like to delete, like I want to would like to like delete my old classes now and yeah. to build new ones? You should be able to go in and manage your classes. Um, I don't have any, so it's hard for me to go in and figure out how to do that. Wouldn't be, I, I'm gonna guess that it would be underneath your, your own yeah. profile. You'd probably yep. have under there your class listed. And if not, you can do a search in their educator center or in Google for, you know, delete yeah. classes. Okay is my guess. Um, and I, if you have trouble, let me know and I can help you all. Google yeah, I, I just haven't looked at I could, you know, I just wanted to know if you uh, were up on that. Yeah, so if we go into support actually, so if, what can I help with you? Delete classroom. I probably should put old ones. That's for assignments, assigning in Google Classroom, using it, syncing classes and adding students. It might be in here. So it's just a matter of um, remove class, create classes, add students. It's got to be in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, when, when you have classroom set up um, and, and you get a new student, you can uh, sync it through classroom and that new student will be added to it also. Yes. Yeah, I love how it integrates so well with Classroom. I think that's awesome. It's one of the few programs that we have that the integration is pretty um, seamless. We don't have to go crazy trying to do it. Um, yeah, I don't have a classes tab, but I believe under your classes tab, that's where you're gonna see a lot of your options, like where you can add co-teachers and probably, oh yeah, remove or restore a class. There you go. Okay. Yep, and I was right, you click on your initials go under your classes tab, and then you'll be able to archive your class. Okay. And after you archive it, if you want to restore it, you can do that too. Beautiful. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll send my bill. Don't worry. Yeah, I sure you will. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts or questions? I'm hoping that more people will use Newzella. I keep an eye on the usage of all of our programs, but most especially the ones that we pay for, and even more especially the ones that are very pricey, which Newzella is. We spend a lot of money for Newzella because it's such a um, complex, individualized program that can do so much. But if we're not, I know for a long time we had teachers just printing the articles and passing them out to students and that doesn't do the program justice. It can do so much more than that and it's so much more interactive. So we're keeping a close eye on our usage this year. We really want to be able to see that change to be able to justify keeping this program as part of our offerings in Mashpee. Yeah. But, you, um, you, know, you know, a lot of times, uh, or the times that I had printed it out, there are times it's, uh, it's good to print it out. Oh, and course. what I would have them do is, okay, you printed it out. Now you need to go in and sign in to take your quiz and things like that to keep that updated profile going. Absolutely. Um, yep. So yep. the more that we can spread the word about all the things that Newzella can do, the more that um, we can justify keeping it and being able to reach the needs of all of our students. So we will share this recording and uh, hopefully 
increase our usage during this remote learning time or hybrid learning time. All right, any last okay. thoughts or questions? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you guys hung out with me. Let me hit stop recording.